Hello everybody! Welcome to another episode of Dissonant Waves. This is our 17th mini-sode. And, once again, talking about Green Day. Well, yeah. sort of Green Day. If you can believe the rumors. Uh, you see, uh, they've had some side projects. Some uh, real, some confirmed, some not confirmed, but we know to be them. And uh, we got the network, we got the Foxborough hot tubs, and this has all kind of led us into a larger discussion of Green Day and the uh, fabled album Cigarettes and Valentines. Yes. So, um, Trix, why don't you tell us about the network a little bit and who they are or, or not? Well, they are allegedly Green Day, and they're kind of just a uh, a whole parody of. Um... Devo, because they have like a fake church around them too. Yeah, a uh, church of lushatology, which is their Reddit uh, forum, I think. Uh, I don't know. It's I uh, that's um, they have a symbol of it on their website. When I when I linked to that uh, post with the uh, that track list that I showed you, that was the lushatology thing. Ah, uh, what was it? Uh, cool. I missed that. But uh, yeah, they're a. Um, but yeah, they are supposedly. Green Day, but we we'll, we'll we'll wait for them to confirm that. Even though Billy Joe has uh, adamantly denied that they are not. But Mike Dern, I think, has confirmed it. Yeah. But so you know. But, yeah, and uh, the members are uh, Willem Fink, uh, the Snoo, which I think of that uh, old uh, '90s uh, puzzle game that follows me on Twitter. What? <laughs> Snood. The game Snood. I don't know what that is. You'll recognize... Oh, here, I'm pulling up their Twitter account. Um, okay. I'm sending you a screenshot. You'll you'll recognize the uh, the, fa- the, uh, the face. It was that weird, like, just face puzzle game, if that makes sense. Oh, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll see. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so there's the Snoo, uh, Van Gogh, Z, Balducci. Balducci. Captain Underpants. Yes. Because it was the early 2000s and Captain Underpants was popular. Did they, did they come out before Captain Underpants? Or I have never seen this question? thing in my life. Oh, Jesus, man. I don't know what Snoot is. It's kind of fun. They follow me on Twitter. That's fun. Captain Underpants came out in 97. All right. So they just copied and pasted, I guess. Yeah. And he's the keyboard player in the Hazmat. Maybe they just really like the comics or the the books. I mean, maybe they were good kids' books, from what I remember. I remember enjoying them as a child. Yeah. But um, yeah, they're 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 Green Day, but they're New Wave Green Day. And listening to it this week, because I had never really listened to it before, I had the the sudden realization that like Green Day shouldn't be a punk band. It just shouldn't be. Yeah. Like I, I was thinking that too. Like with their, especially with like their age now and their status. Like, if Father of All Motherfuckers is like their attempt to be punk still, and like they're they're like boxing themselves into that label, like don't do it. Just don't do it. Yeah, I, I, they're like, um, the, they're my father's age, and my father is like the least punk rock guy I know. And, it, and it's weird, like. No, to, just just put this right off the bat. I do not think this is cigarettes and Valentine's money money twenty twenty. Their their no. album. I, I like I can definitely see the Green Day feels and the hooks and like there's some songs where I'm like okay I can see that being on the same album as like Governator. And there are some uh, songs where it's like that is very, very clearly Billy Joe just singing. Yeah, like uh, teenagers from Mars. Mm-hmm. Or Spike. Spike is all Billy Joe. Oh yeah. But um, I guess we should set up a little bit. Cigarettes of Valentine's was the album after Warning. Well, technically after their album Shenanigans, which was a B-sides and like rarities album, which is important because uh, when they they done Cigarettes of Valentine's, they had it like ma- like mixed or something like that, and then like the masters got stolen allegedly, and yeah, they, they decided what was that they had a rough mix, like just like the foundations of the tracks recorded. Right, and so they decided, you know, fuck it, let's just do something else. And then that came uh, to be American Idiot. Yeah. 
And so for a long time, you know, people had heard about cigarettes and Valentine's, which I guess had already been like starting to get like uh, promoted and stuff. And so it's been like thought that oh, this network album that came out in two thousand three, the same year that uh, cigarettes and Valentine's was supposed to be a thing, uh, Money Money twenty twenty, that this was 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 uh, supposed to be it, and it's not. It it just isn't. And you know, there's always been like these ideas of like, where is it? Have they ever used the songs anywhere? And I think it's been confirmed. Uh, too much too soon is definitely from the album. Yeah, and that was on the American Idiot Deluxe Edition. I think the other two songs are also confirmed. But I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Governator and uh, Shoplifter. Yeah, but even if they're not, they sound similar enough that I can see it. You definitely. And then, um, and then, Cigarettes of Valentine's wasn't really a thing itself. There was a song, but it was only once we got to the DVD, you know, live album, Awesome as Fuck, in like 2011, when they finally unveiled it and like had it be released. And so there's been like this thing of like, where where are these songs? You know, what else has been going on with these? There's like been a few, but what else is you know? Is there anything else that we don't know about? And then like. A couple of years ago now is it maybe a year or two that yeah, this music producer track listing or something yeah this music producer like posted the cd uh track listing with american idiot but it was like a list of b-sides basically like american idiot b-sides and you know it, it has like uh too much too soon and cigarettes and valentines and everyone's like oh that's it that's cigarettes and valentines that's the album and like it's not because it's very clearly meant to be American Idiot B-Sides because you get stuff like uh, Favorite Son being um, discussed as like a Japan-only like rarity thing on the on the track listing. And that's only going to be There's a thing. A cover, of, a cover of 19th Nervous Breakdown. Right, and that's only going to be stuff that happens you know, once American Idiot's out and they kind of figured out like the marketing and where the songs are going to get cut and whatnot. And so. But... The, the idea nonetheless exists among fans, or at least some, that that is going to be Sacred of Valentine's, and for the most part, it was going to be some kind of B-Sides album. Which I don't think is true, because as I just said, they had their album Shenanigans come out, which was already a B-Sides and Rarities album. Yeah. So Sacred of Valentine's, I think, was supposed to be like a main thing. It was supposed to be, you know, the next follow-up to whatever Warning was. And so... It's just there in ether, and some of the songs may have surfaced in other places, and some of them may have just been buried forever. Uh, he kind of made a playlist based on the track listings, and like, kind of had an experience between the two of us of maybe what it is. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm Dominic, and this is Tricks, by the way. We haven't said that yet. Oh uh, yeah, it's just, it's just, no no riddle in this week. Yeah, right. He said, but um. So we've, we've replicated as much as we could the experience of whatever that B-Sides album is supposed to be. And it's... Yeah. Uh, would you would you agree with me if I said it's not really an album? Yeah, it's not really an album. It's just random songs kind of just smashed together? Now, granted, that is us listening to it, taking songs off of other albums. Right, because it's been said that, you know, some of the songs appeared on Trey... Was it their like eleventh or twelfth album or whatever? Yeah, Walk Away and Brutal Love. One may have appeared on Uno. One appeared on like Twenty uh, First Century Breakdown. Yeah, and one was a B side to uh, uh, a single. Uh, what was it? Know Your Enemy. Was, um, yeah, Know Your Enemy, which and... was uh, Lights Out. Yeah. And I think it might have been an album. It might have existed as an album, but. I think that um, the way we have it assembled right now, we have like rougher cuts with like uh, too much too soon and shoplifter. Right, we have stuff that is more true to what it was supposed to be. Yeah, and then we have more finished stuff like horseshoes and hand grenades, which was in like mixed to be whatever twenty first century breakdown is supposed to be. Yeah, and so I think that at some point these songs might have been an album, but. They're not. They're not an album the way they are now. They've shifted. Yes. Yeah. So like, there might have been like a better, more better flow for the original, that sort of thing. Right. And then, um, then we have the other side project of Green Day, Foxborough Hot Tubs, which was you know, 
their garage rock eight like eight track you know thing they just did while doing 21st Century Breakdown and it's been you know said that other songs from Cigarettes and Valentine's have appeared there yeah like Broadway and the Pedestrian and those songs I, I see as being from it I can see that I can see that too because those two sound a little bit different from the others they're not as like throwbacky and they have that the same like vocal intonations and like style yeah because like the Cigarettes and Valentine's style, from everything we've heard, is also kind of the American Idiot style. And, like, it has a very specific, like, sound among Green... Like, even in Green Day's discography. Yeah. And, like, very specific instruments, and, like, just the way Billy Joe sings certain things. It's just that was, like, the time. And some of these yeah. songs clearly are from that time. Yes, the early pop... The early aughts pop punk sound. The, the Green Day version of it. Yeah. Like I'm thinking of like um like what's her name and Yeah. Letter bomb. Yeah, like that stuff specifically that like that it emblemizes what that sound is like. Yeah, uh there is a thought that Letter Bomb was reworked from a, a Cigarettes and Valentine's song called Cluster Bomb. Yeah, I could yeah, yeah. And which would make sense because Letter Bomb is the best damn song off of uh American Idiot if you have. I disagree. But I can I I respect it. I respect it. I mean it does make me think though that Cigarettes of Valentine's, like not the version that we listen to, but the actual version would have been actually really good. Yeah. Because like this is like a... I could I, I I could see them just keeping this in the vault, waiting for some controversy to happen, because you know it's good something. To get everything in everybody in their good favors again, they'll release the lost. Episode. I mean, I would, I would assume that Father of All Motherfuckers would have set the world on fire as being one of the worst things they've ever done, but people seem to be okay with it. I, I, I'm actually kind of okay with it. Like, I've, I've had to listen to more of the songs because I paid money for some of them to play on Beat Saber. Yeah. Because it was cheaper to buy the whole pack than to just buy the non-Father of All Motherfuckers songs. So I'm like, fuck it. And they're not horrible, but they're not Green Day. They're just and random, think, like, yeah. pop songs almost. Yeah, if it wasn't a Green Day album, I think that w- w- that would have been it would have been received a lot better. Yes, I think that's and, the... I, and I said that on our first episode. And I'm like, these songs aren't bad; they're just not Green Day. I, I only like I don't think they're terrible. I don't think they're amazing either. As a thing, they're fine. Like, if it was a debut album, we'd be impressed. I don't know about that. I think I think a lot of the songs are like kind of just like the filler tracks of a regular standard like. If you go to, like, AFI or something. Yeah. Like, if you just look up an AFI, you know, like, we did um, December Underground. I feel like, you know, some of this stuff is kind of equivalent to some of that stuff. Yeah. So, I'm still very disappointed in uh, Father of All. I think Green Day, like, if that, like I said, if they're just trying to be punk now, and, like, that is what their idea of punk is, and, like, they're trying to, like, like, it seems like they're, they're trying to, like, shift themselves into different modes, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah. American Idiot and 21st Century Breakdown was, like, their political period or whatever. And they're like, okay, we're not going to be political anymore, guys. We're going to go do, you know, Uno, Do, and Trey, or whatever. And then we're going to go political again with Revolution Radio. And they're like, not totally, but kind of, but not really. Yeah, like... Because, like... And, and then, with the fucking network... They just came out of nowhere after 17 years of silence, basically. Yeah. And released and released a song called Ivanka is a Nazi. And that's the other thing, too. Is like, as we were preparing this episode, it came out that the network was coming back and there's going to be a new album. And then, oh, there's not just a new album. There's a new EP. And the new EP came out, like, as of this recording, like, like two days ago. Yesterday, pretty much, yeah. And it's great. <laughs> yeah. Trans Am. It's is, like all of... Yeah, it's about, like, de- debating misinformation, like, uh, and calling people who think the Earth is flat an idiot. And I'm like, hell yeah. Like, yeah, they got one song about flat Earth, one song about fentanyl, and, like, again, as we were talking about, this this album, this EP, came out on the Transgender Day of Remembrance, and it's called Trans Am. And I'm like, and it should be said, you know, the cover art, if you look at it, the main three colors you see are pink, blue, and a little, little bit of white. So it's like, there's got to be something to it, you know, a little bit. Yeah, there has to be. But, um, like, 
there's like it is an inherently political EP just off the bat. Like Money Money Twenty Twenty isn't super political or anything. It's a fun album, but this is like bringing it back. Yeah. Like, like this is more punk than this has a more punk and political message than all of American Idiot. Yeah, like there's something about the network that feels more um direct and legitimate, like relatable than American Idiot and what Green Day does on the major Green Day line. I think the masks have something to do with that. Maybe. Maybe it's just that it's not, you know, Green Day makers of Dookie. Yeah. Maker of well, they, they, I was gonna say maker of the Jack Off song. They had a Jack Off song, so yeah, they've had like two Jack Off songs in twenty twenty. Yeah, but like the easiest comparison to make, I know you didn't like the song Spike very much, but Spike is basically reworking Welcome to Paradise. It is the same idea. Yeah, like it is. Guy gets you know leaves home, uh, shacks up in like a warehouse thing. It's like you know drug addicts and stuff and it's all about him trying to get his fix and yeah. just like his conversations with different people whether it's a drug dealer or his mom or whatever and like Welcome to Paradise is kind of like you know guy moving out moving into like a same similar situation like just like kind of writing back to his mom at different points throughout I, I did I did read somewhere that that, that song is based entirely off of a joke <laughs> yeah that that is uh, what do you call a uh, drummer who broke up with his girlfriend what? Homeless. <laughs> Either way, whether it's a joke or not, it like it's one of those things where they redid the re- they redid the concept but made it better. Yeah. Like, like I said before, my problem with Green Day has always been that Billy Joe sounds like the guy you know he has punk credibility, but it always sounds like he's trying to fit in. He's like really trying to amp up his credibility, and like it just feels forced. But nothing about the network feels forced. It does not. And like even even now when they are more political than they've ever been, like it it just feels like they just put it. It's yeah, it's baffling. Yeah, they're just putting out like electronic Ramones songs that kick ass. Like they, like they just have a song called Ivanka's Nazi and Ivanka's Twelve of Three Ks. Yeah, it's like. You can't get any more, any less subtle than that. It's like American Idiot. It's like, oh yeah, this guy is like a slacker and he becomes a revolutionary or he at least dates a revolutionary and doesn't really care, but it's like, come on, guys. American Idiot had some good points, maybe, but it's very dated now in a way. Like, it's still yeah. it's still fun to listen to in parts. But there's like, and I think, you know, there's always a possibility that uh, some of this stuff is going to come really dated too once the Trump era has passed us. Oh yeah, like I'm sure it's already gonna, it's already just kind of aging poorly. But who knows? Ivanka might continue with politics. Any of them might continue with politics. Sure she will. Yeah. Oh god. Well, hopefully Donnie goes to prison. But there's Eric, and there's Tiffany. Then, and then there's the younger one. You know, like yeah. there's um, yeah, there's there's literally you know, it's a family full of possibilities. I, I want I want Baron to start blading, dating a black guy. And- and just turn into like this uh, fucking anarchist revolutionary. That, that'd be a gr- that'd be great. I'd love that. Yeah. And it'd be like uh, he'll be on Mary Trump's side of the family. Yeah. But you know he's still a kid, so we'll see what happens with him. Yeah. Maybe when Melania gets the divorce, different. Maybe. But I don't know. It's like even Foxborough hot tubs being as different as it is feels genuine in a way that Green Day does not. Yeah. So I don't get it. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, why are they putting themselves through this band? Yes, it's popular. Yes, it makes money. But why are they putting themselves through this front and it just feels forced? It's always felt forced. And, like, they, yeah. em- like they, they embody it you know, they are the reason that punk became like sophomoric and like less, you know, you know, anarchist and more just like you know goof off slacker types. Yeah, which on that kind of topic, uh, there's an old school punk band called Screeching Weasel. Yeah. Who I, who I found out that for one album, Mike Burnt played bass on. Yeah. Which is like one of like the old school like anarchist punk bands just had like the pop punk bass player on it for 
which I just thought was kind of interesting. Yeah, I, I do think that's cool. I do like, I do appreciate that. Yeah. But it just and like I, I think that uh, Billy Joe is like the most poserish of the crew. If that makes sense. Like the yeah. others have some credibility behind them. It seems. I don't like, I don't, but it's like at the same time, Billy Joe isn't exactly a poser. You know what I mean? Yeah. He just appears he's like not a poser, but he acts like a. Like he's just super insecure, but also very secure. Yeah. Hard to know. Yeah. I, like, we were three episodes into this little sub series about Green Day, and it like, I went wow. from like yeah, I went from like you know, the first episode was highs and lows. American idiot, father of all motherfuckers. Yes. And then we got the Dookie and Insomniac, and I was kind of done with it. I did not, you know, amazingly enjoy either album. Yeah. And now we're here. And it's high. It's, we're running an all-time high on our green day. Yeah, like, everything here is better. Everything here is, like, interesting and fun to listen to. Like, this might be the, this might be the peak, you know? Yeah. Because, like, we can do some other side projects and stuff, but it's going to be a lot of the green day from here out. It's straight Green Day. Like, we're going to mainline yeah. some Green Day into our system. Uh, you know, we'll still get to Money Money 2020 Part 2 when that comes out on December 4th. But, like, yeah. I I don't know. <laughs> like, how is that going to go? Is it going to be more of, like, Trans Am? And if, that, if that's the case, then fucking great. You know, is yeah. trans, like, is Trans Am just, like a, a, like, a collection of, like, their political stuff? And then Money Money is just going to be more of like the first album? I don't know. Well, I found their YouTube channel, um, right? Uh, and they they had samples of like two other songs. One of them was called Tarantula. I'm pretty sure. Uh huh. And uh, what was the other one called? That's just like a Smashing Pumpkins cover. It, no, it wasn't. It was just uh, <clears throat> the video was weird. It was just like Fink on Instagram scrolling through videos of tarantulas. The video for of my cousin Nazi is also very strange. Oh my god! Yeah, it is. I... Uh, we'll get into that in a second. Uh, the other one was The Prophecy, which um, was just kind of like their intro. But I think there's going to be a song based on that, because like, I think the whole idea was that they're calling uh, Money Money 2020 a prophecy that was going to come true this year, and that this year was going to be horrible. And I think they're just kind of doing like some uh, retconning. I mean, sure. So I, th- <laughs> I think it'll be an interesting album, at least. Yeah, I, d- I definitely agree. Um, what else? Like, and it's like after now, Trans Am is out, but also like before uh, Money Money Twenty Twenty Part Two comes out, then there's also Billy Joel's, uh, Billy Joe Armstrong's album, uh, No Fun Mondays, which is a cover album. Yeah, and I think he did some stuff with his kids. He just did a lot of quarantine songs, and now it's just, like it's just yeah, gonna be a one, straight album. There was a single uh, for Dreaming I listened to. I forget who, uh, who what he was covering. Yeah, he's covering, you know, the Bangles, uh, the Wonders, uh, Tommy James and the Shondells, John Lennon. Yeah. He he pulls far and wide from stuff that was, like, you know, popular when he was a kid, I'm sure. Yeah. This is a man who's about 50. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, uh, yeah, his the, the the cover art for that album, uh, No Fun Mondays, is like referencing something. I know, I don't remember what it is. Um, it, it's uh, I know, it, I know. Is it Tommy? Is. is it is it is it the Who album, Tommy? No, it's not. It's it's an album. I, I'm thinking of a. I, it might be Tommy, but I'm thinking of um, a um, a movie. No, it's not Tommy. That's it's like the absolute fucking absolute fame or something. Oh, absolutely famous, almost famous. Yeah, almost famous. Uh, let me see. It's similar, but not right. It's it's sunglasses. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, I feel like I feel like it comes from somewhere else, though. It is not uh, Tommy by the Who. Because Tommy by the Who is the, oh. is different. Like a lattice fence. Yes, with Sky. If I reverse image search it, can I find it? Because <laughs> this will drive us crazy for a little while. I don't know. I'm looking. I'm looking. Uh, I swear it looks familiar too. Yeah. Um, 
don't know. I, I, I wish I knew. I wish I could. If we find it, comments on the Instagram. If we find it, we'll 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 do our own version as the album art for this episode or the uh, episode yeah. art. And then uh, tricks, you can be the model for this. <laughs> All right, I got the hair. Yeah. But um. Anyway. So. I guess we're kind of already talking about the network, so we can just continue on with that, because, like... Yeah, let's talk about uh, the Ivanka is a Nazi uh, music video. I mean, first of all, I, out of the way. I mean, I appreciate the song by itself, because the song is, like, very, like, atypical in its structure, where it has, like, a minute-long, like, prelude of sorts. Yeah. And it just sounds very strange and different. And not, 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 at, all, not at all, like, what a Green Day would do. And so I, I am down with that <laughs> at this yeah. point. And then, it like, and then it's just, like, a bunch of shots of stuff. Like, it's hard to really... Yeah, like, a, a, a gender bent or gender fluid sync is kind of just, like, dancing over in front of a green screen and there's frames removed so that it looks choppy. Yeah, like, and, a uh, skirt and, like, uh... Yeah. <sighs> a halter top kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, just... <laughs> And just kind of dancing in front of just like a Nazi footage, basically of like war of like World War Two and like tanks and the marches and that sort of thing. And then it breaks down. It goes faster and faster. And the yeah. Picks up and up. And uh, it goes. It cuts to the actual band. And then like they're kind of they're kind of like green screened into it a bit, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They're they're uh, kind of just assembled and. Uh, like, uh, you, you've got Van Gogh holding this funky-looking bass uh, in his white mask. Um, this, I think it's Snood, Snoo, um on the drums in his luchador and skirt and fishnets. Yeah. And you could tell that there, there, there was green screen, too, because if you looked at his uh, vest that he had on, yeah. his puffy uh, vest, the, the green was, like, replaced with, like, purple. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and you could tell the green screening artifacts on it. I think that's kind of the fun, though. Like, yeah. Like if you look at fucking. Because uh... it's it's like it's obviously like a parody of like Flock of Seagulls sort of. Right, but if you look at a uh, was it Fink that's the singer? Yeah. Like his fucking ski mask is just cut out. Like it's just cut out. Like. Yeah. Like they just cut some holes and do it for for the eyes and the mouth. Yeah. And like uh. Is is Snoo the the bassist? Uh, that's Van Gogh is the bassist. He looks like a fucking art fuck, but also like a mummy. Yeah, and uh, I I I did the bass nerd thing and tried to figure out what bass he was playing, and I found, figured out that it's a Epiphone EBO that's covered in duct tape. <laughs> and the other two and just like, have like it's luchador been, it's masks. Reshaped with cardboard too, so. Yeah, the other two just have like luchador masks and stuff. And like yeah. it's like intentionally like artifacty the video. Oh yeah, it's because it's a parody of like eighties uh, new wave band. I'm looking at the lyrics. It is. <laughs> it just goes straight for the jugular. Yeah. The it opens. So many Nazis at the convention. So many Nazis stand at attention. Do you see Donald? Do you see Eric? Ivanka? Do you see Donald? Do you see Jared? Do you see Heil? It just, yeah. like, it's like they just they just watched the Republican convention and just wrote some shit, and it's like, yeah, like, <laughs> like where is this in Green Day? Like, why can't Green Day just be this? Yeah, and then you got the return of the Einzweig Drive here. Yeah, they do a lot of German. Then... Yeah, that was a, that was in, in um, the first. That was in Money Money Twenty Twenty. Uh, yeah, I thought that was a nice callback. Yeah, let me see where it is. Uh, I wrote it down. Her father, Das Führer, like Ava Braun, the fashion of fascists, patriarch. She, she has a Gucci swastika and loves the NRA. And loves the NRA. Money Money 2020 is counting off in German. The actual song. Yeah. Uh, she says that she is kosher, but we know that she's a bigot. Which is a reference to her being married to a Jewish guy. 
Yeah. Like, I, like this is up there with just, like, the song Fuck Donald Trump is, like, a fucking slam. Yeah. But it's, like, it's the network. It's not Green Day, so people aren't going to pay attention as much. Yeah. The children in cages, a gulag. Her daddy is Hitler, a demagogue. Another rumored track called the Alt. Looking at the the Green Day FM page here, there's something about the song called the Ultimate Test that is confirmed to not be a song by the. And then there's another. Oh, okay. Called the Network. That's a um, a um, fucking me- uh, high metal chord band. All right, it's it, it's a it's a version of a song called Sound the Alarm by a band called Viva Death. Never mind. But, yeah, the prophecy is mentioned, Tarantula is mentioned here. And, like, yeah, Green Day has talked about not liking Trump and all that stuff. Yeah. But, like, this is putting money where their mouth is in a way they didn't even do for Bush. No. Like, you know, you know Trump was bad when fucking Green Day just came out and was like, he's a fucking Nazi. Like, like I mean, like, Holiday has the line, Sig Heil to the president's gas man, bombs away is your yeah. punishment, pulverize the Eiffel Tower. Uh, something your government. Don't criticize your government. But like I said, American, even American idiot, even as good as some of those songs are, it was forced. And yeah. yeah, here we are. Like they, they've proven they can do it. They've proven they can put out some stuff that is direct to the point and punk us all fuck. Yeah, because again, this sounds like a fucking Ramon song played by Flock of Seagulls or something. Yeah. Like this is this is all like you know fucking like Talking Heads, David Byrne, Flock of Seagulls, like everything from. Yeah. And it, and it comes from uh, the original album, Money Money Twenty Twenty, which is fine in its own right too. Like yeah, good. Like it's yeah, not. It is definitely good. Like I mean, Trans Am has the special like distinction of being four tracks long and being better than Father of All Motherfuckers. Despite being released yeah. in the same year, and Money Money Twenty Twenty is also a better album than that. Oh yeah, it, it's fun. But it, the interesting thing is that like the other two songs that they've released with it, Teenagers from Mars and Hammer of the Gods, I feel like complete that album in a way. Yeah, the ha- Hammer of the Gods definitely, and ta- Teenagers from like Teenagers from Mars was like a childhood song for me, and I didn't even realize it until I went back and listened to this album earlier in the year. It's also that a Misfits song, cover, which is fun. Yeah, that song is all over fucking uh, Tony Hawk's under- American Way. Yeah. Although I will say it is kind of weird for like a 30-year-old dude at the time to sing about inseminating little girls in the middle of what dreams. Yeah, that also bothered me a bit. I mean, uh, that, that is that is a Misfits cover, though, so there's something to yeah. that, at least. Yeah, at, le- at least it's not an original lyric, and I think Misfits were young. Yeah. Looking at the... Uh... Soundtrack for American Wasteland. You also had Holiday on there. Yeah, because that's why I, that's why I played American Skateland, uh, DS, and that's why I fucking fell in love with Holiday. I still haven't played uh, the mobile ones. I should play Skateland because I got the DS emulator. Skateland is legitimately worth it. It is legitimately a Tony Hawk game. Like, if there's no like fucking like. It's not like the it's not like the Game Boy games that are just weird. No, it's not like, you know, ten amazing uh, Game Boy Advance games that look cool but are not the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, well, check it out. Big shout out to Minimi there. Yeah. I mean, he is the only channel, our YouTube channel. Was it? He's the, he's the only channel that the that uh, Distant Waves use. And we, he's the only one we officially endorse. We are subscribed to him. Yes. We're all patrons. Yeah, we all... Subscribe to his Patreon. We all love Peter. Yes. You should get him on a hug. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I know, but um, yeah, holidays there. I have to, I have to replay it out and see where Teenagers from Mars comes in and see if I could like pick up on the fact that it was the same band doing both songs. <laughs> yeah, hindsight, I could, I could, t- I can tell, but um, I as as a kid, I was an idiot kid. Yeah. You know, let's see. Any any songs you want to talk about from Money Money Twenty Twenty itself? Uh, let me just pull up the list. Uh, the intro track. I Joe think. Robot. Yeah, Joe Robot was good. Yeah, it has like a lot of great like drums on it. I, I made note yeah. of that. Like it was very like 
hard and heavy, ready to go right out of the gate. Yeah, I like uh, the Supermodel Robots was good. I do appreciate I like the... that they um they brought in the baseline for some of it that was just very good, like dookie. Yeah, um, Money Money Twenty Twenty really liked the bass sound on. Throughout the whole album, he's kind of got this like gritty kind of almost synth bass sound on the bass, which I quite enjoy. I I noted down that uh, Hungry Hungry Models uh, Van Gogh is singing that. Uh, really. Uh, Yes. I didn't. Oh, okay. He's also singing like Governator. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay, because that well, was. Once uh... you can, I I can kind I can pick his voice up now that I listen for it. But um, I noticed that I made a mention that he sounded like a uh, fucking, what was his name? Tobuscus, the old school YouTuber. Okay. And uh, <laughs> but he's saying like. A shit ton more progressive things than Tobuscus has ever fucking said. It was, uh, it was Hungry Hungry Models that reminded me more of like an AFI song. Like, like they were going to like Davy Havoc territory of like theatrical stuff. Yeah. Um. Um. Spastic Society is just interesting with like shouting like aluminum. Uh, I, I'm curious if that song got any shit in the UK because Spastic is such like a slur over there. Oh yeah. I, 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 yeah, that's a good question. Was it was it was it Mario Party? No, it was it was a Mario game? I remember that got it was shit. One of the Mario Party games on the Wii. I think it was the first. It got shit years and years ago. I remember because it had the word spastic in it. Yeah. And ever since then, it's like one of those things you just know. Like you cannot use that word lightly there. No. Um. Yeah, uh, spastic society though, like synthesize. Paralyze. Glass eye. And like some of the songs have like a robotic like voice. Talk on capitalism. Yeah. Some of the songs have like a robotic voice. Some of the songs don't have like a robotic voice. And it makes me wonder though, you know, like, were all these songs like recorded in a specific time and meant to be like this project, or is it just something that kind of like fell into? Who knows? Because like I said, you know, Billy Joe is clearly singing on some of them. Yeah. Another song, it is just like, you know, more of like a talking head, it's just like a robotic kind of voice. Yeah. Where, you know, it's meant to be filtered more, and maybe it's Mike Dirt singing it or something, but I'm curious, like, what, yeah. like, how those choices got made. X ray hamburger is kind of a weak. Yeah, it's a weak closer. Yeah. I'm definitely glad that they had teenagers from Mars. And yeah. Right Hand Rama has the great line of Pamela and her five sisters. Ah, I that one's going over my head. Yeah, it took me a second there. I was like, oh, the palm and the fingers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. And then it's just, I think the song, like surprisingly, is just about he's gonna jack off to a magazine, and then actually it doesn't go very well. Yeah, which is kind of fun, I guess. Like. We've all been there. Yeah, but like Dookie, like fucking, uh, was it Basket Case or Longview that's just all about it? Longview is just yeah. all about it. And this is like, again, an evolution on that idea. Like, Welcome to Paradise, you know? Yeah. Rain Day uses the same topics, but their songs evolve with the times. You know, it's a uh, commentary on the way society has progressed. Yeah. And then you have Rochambeau with the fucking heavy breathing. Rochambeau is, gr- is a great tune. Yeah, it is, it is a bop, but also the heavy breathing, though. Yeah. Also, note for the line, I don't believe in Valentine's. As if, as if saying, like, cigarettes and Valentine's. Not a thing. Maybe. Oh, yeah, I, I really like Spike. Did you, do you still hate it as much as you did? <laughs> it's, like, I can appreciate it, but I still skip it, because it's like, I, I, I'm not a fan. It's one of those things where, like, I can appreciate the story, but it's like, I only need to hear it, like, once or twice. Because there's not a lot of singing. It's literally just uh, Billy Joe Armstrong calling people. Yeah. Hi, this is Brandon. My, my friends call me Spike now. I just I just think that's so funny. Don't make me go all Blackhawk on your ass. I didn't... Wait, wait, no, I don't mean that. <laughs> the funny thing is that you say it with much more conviction than he does. <laughs> it, it, it's, he's kind of, I feel like he's just reciting the lines a little bit. Yeah. Like you actually actually made it sound like genuine. I didn't call for a shitty conversation. I don't know. The yeah. network is surprisingly 
a band to, to pay attention to in the 2020? <laughs> yeah. Where Green Day is not? Would be saying. Yeah. Like, I did not think I'd be, like, this hot on anything with Green Day involved for a long time. Yeah, like, I, well, I think what they did was they, I think they knew that they were going to come out with, I think they planned the Network 2020 Part 2. <clears throat> I'm going to get into some conspiracy theory. Okay. Okay. I think they intentionally made Father of All Motherfuckers terrible. Why? So that when they come out with the network, uh, nobody gives a shit about Father of All Motherfuckers. And they can focus more on the network. And um, the network can have just... It's time to shine, and so nobody's talking about really the Green Day aspect of it. And they can just be the network for this half of the year. What if they were just a network for like a couple more years? That would be pretty sweet. Like I'm, we got more more of the network albums. I could see. I I would be pretty happy with that if they're good. I'm I'm into your idea here. I just have one one problem with it. Yeah. Why do they promote Father of Motherf- Motherfuckers so heavy? That was meant to be part of the conspiracy. Like why? Like why sign to make uh, "Fire Ready Aim" to be the the song of the NHL for like the next five years or whatever? Uh, that that might have uh, they they might have had like some marketing aspects to it too. Like they're like, okay, we have to put out this album. We have to put out a green. Oh, I'm reading here. Hold on, I think I think I figured it out. <laughs> uh, according to Wikipedia, it says. Father of All Motherfuckers is Green Day's final album to be released by Reprise Records, as the band has confirmed they have fulfilled their contract with the label. Yep. As I was saying, I was right. <laughs> <laughs> Literally just an album you put out just because you want to shit it out and get it done with. They're pulling, pulling a prince. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of bands do this, too. Just like, we need to get off the label. Let's just get this out there. It happened to um, Stevie uh, of Adult Mom. Really? She, she, yeah, she got fucked by her label, though. They, they got fucked by their label. Um, where, um, <clears throat> because they they couldn't keep the masters of the band. Right. They lost the rights to the masters somehow. And uh, uh, the the uh, the label tried to keep everything. Right. And um, it, it ended up working out for them, but it was it was rocky for a bit. I mean, like. Let's not let's not like gloss over the fact that Father of All is the is the shortest album I think they've done. Oh yeah. So, it, th- th- this makes a lot of sense now that we're talking about it, and I can actually respect Father of All Motherfuckers. And the reason it's getting um, promoted so hard has nothing to do with them, because it's their last Green Day album. They're like, oh, we need to make some money. Is it the last Green Day album, or is it just the last Green Day album with the record label? With that record label, I think the next ones would be going on Billy Joe's per- personal um, record label, Adeline. Well, Adeline's done. Oh, it is. I didn't realize that. Yeah, that's yeah. Adeline Records folded in like 2017. I didn't realize that, but I, I have a feeling we're gonna see more Green Day. But we're gonna Green Day is gonna become a new thing, I think, and they're gonna. I I think being on that record label might have like stifled them creatively a little bit. I can believe that. I mean, maybe, maybe they're like, oh, okay, we, they let him do fucking Uno Dos Tres, or whatever, but, like, also, like, they were yeah. boxed in a little bit, maybe? Yeah. And so I, th- I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna come out strong from this. And the next Green Day album we see in, like, two or three years is gonna be a bop. And a- Here's the question, then. Will they put out an album called Cigarettes and Valentines this decade now? We might actually see that. Would it be the same? Would it would it have those? Would it have the songs that are owned by Reprise? Probably, you think, or they they'll do new stuff. Well, here's the thing: I don't think because they were never published. I don't think Revi- Re- Reprise owns them. Right, but the, stuff like "Too Much Too Soon" is. Oh yeah. Also, um, the the title track is. <laughs> yeah. Well, is it because it was only released on a live album? The album was released by Reprise. Yeah, so who knows? I'm just saying. Maybe they'll do, maybe they'll leak it. And like the they'll just put like the original masters out on YouTube and saying like, oh, we have no idea how this happened. It was a secret ransom the whole time. Yeah. 
Well, I think they got the masters back. Was was eventually what happened. But um, yeah, they did get the masters back. They're, it's in the vault, they say. Like there, there is no better time. I feel like to like come back with like the way to get the fans back in a way. You know what I mean? Because like if Father of All is kind of like burning bridges a little bit and like just getting it done to get it out there. Yeah. Making good and releasing cigarettes and Valentine's would be like the thing to do. Yeah, it would. That would that that would actually be good. And I think may also do, bringing back the network might be part of that too. Maybe like it's like you know the network happened after cigarettes and Valentine's. So maybe it's now reversed with like the network happened and then we'll get cigarettes and Valentine's. Yeah, and I th- I think they always kind of planned for the network to come back in 2020 as, like, a joke. Like how uh, James Rolfe made a joke about uh, reviewing Street Fighter 2010 come 2010 and whatever the 2021 he did was. Yeah. So I, I think um, I-, I think we'll see something coming up with Green Day soon. I would very much be interested in seeing what happens next. Yeah, like... I, I wasn't thinking, after, up until this conversation, I wasn't really thinking about keeping my tabs on Green Day, but now I'm going to. Because, like, the thing, too, <laughs> it's so funny to me, at least according to Wikipedia, I'm sure the quotes are other places, that it's a direct quote. Well, here, uh, is, where is it from? Uh, Rolling Stone. Oh, damn. About how um, they basically didn't think that Cigarettes and Valentine's was really maximum Green Day. Is the quote apparently pointing yeah. to Mike Dern or whatever? And they were concerned that it wasn't living up to the standards that they had. And then it's like you listen to the Father of All Motherfuckers, and it's like, well, what the fuck then? Yeah. What is what is what is the what is the real? What is what is the wrong? What is the maximum Green Day then? Hmm? Yeah, like. If they're willing to put out Father All Motherfuckers and be done with doing the album just to get it out there. I mean, like, you think maybe that's why, like, they went so, like, heavy with, like, we're calling it Father of All Motherfuckers. Like, we're just gonna fuck with them now and get it and just, like, yeah. make them. Like, uh, that fucking uh, Whitest Kids You Know sketch I put on yeah. on uh, the Discord a while ago. Like, uh, well, this, this label is run by homos. And then, like, they're shitting on American Idiot in a way, because, like, that album art is American Idiot, but, like, they fucking just, like, screw it all over and put a unicorn on it. I, I, I can actually start to respect Father of All Motherfuckers now. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is, this is totally just, like, fucking conjecture at this point. Oh, yes. Like, what if they became... Because you, the, you see the unicorn, right, on the, on the album, right? Oh, yes. Duking up a rainbow. And then you get... An EP from the network of this year called Trans Am, right? What if they turn into a queer core band? Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 30 years in. <laughs> 30 years oh, in. Oh my god. You're like, Billy Joe, it is time to embrace who you are. Finally, after all this time. Oh my god. It is fucking beautiful. It'd be like the greatest resurrection. <laughs> It's like they'll they'll have more like career turnarounds than like John Travolta at this point. Then, oh my god, yeah. Like, they keep coming back. They keep coming back. They keep remaking themselves, and here they are. Like, this, like if this if any of this happens, and Father of All Motherfuckers really turns out to be just that that shit that they put out to like get done with, it would make them relevant again. It would, it would make them relevant in a way that they haven't been since American Idiot. Yeah. Like, it would be, like, an apology, maybe, for, like, how they, how, you know, Dookie and everything changed, you know, punk to be so childish. It would be, you know, an affirmation yeah, of mean, sorts of, like, where they, where they kind of went and how they'd been. Like, if they're really it, boxed in. still kind of perpetuates that with swimmers, though. I never, no, I, I kind of heard about it, but kind of, I forget about what happened. Uh, he run, he, had, he was part of a surf punk band, um. That turned into the whole Burger Records controversy. Oh, God damn it! Was he directly involved with it? Uh yeah, Swimmers was involved. What was 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 Billy Joe's kid like a guilty party in that? Uh, it's it's alleged. Okay. All right, that's why you linked me the one about whether they're all playing together for one of the covers. Yeah. Okay, it's all coming back to me now. It's all coming back to me. 
It is, it is, it is. And uh, so, like, he's not going to undo the damage his son did. No. Further to the thing, but he can at least start the repair. Right. Like, I'm looking, I'm looking at this. Like, I'm looking more about... Because remember, Father Vault also has a carry glitter sample. Yeah. Or, not a sample, but like, the cover kind of of a song, part of it's in there. It's also sampled, yes. And is that just like another thing where they're like, you know, fuck it. We're gonna we're gonna make them regret this album's even out. Yeah, which uh on a similar note, Gary Glitter got uh criminal charges for possession of child pornography. Again, or is just you just kind of explaining to people. Discovering this. Oh yes. Discovering this. this was the one where they found it at the computer shop, I believe. Yes. Yes, I remember hearing about that very long ago and be like, oh wow, that's that's crazy. Yeah. Two thousand five. Oh, is it that late? I feel like it was earlier than that. I well I it says years active nineteen sixty to two thousand five, so I'm gonna assume he stopped when um he got... I don't think he stopped is the thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, uh between uh on, on uh twenty seventh of February twenty fifteen, he was sentenced to a total of sixteen years in prison. Uh, let's see. Uh, it was '97 that it was found on his yep. computer. So yes, he, that, that um, was right. The '90s. And he was he was charged but acquitted in the in the '70s. Yes. I, and I do. I I think I was reading about how like he was out of jail at a certain point and still just trying to release shit and still just like not stopping. And people were like, kind of like, what the fuck, dude. Yeah, because he has an album that came out in 2001. 2001. Yeah. On. Uh, more like off. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Eric Glitter was also fucking in uh, the Joker movie. That was also like that. That was like people were like fucking upset about because the soundtrack had uh, Rock and Roll Part 2 or whatever that song is on there. I don't remember. Oh yeah, Rock and Roll Part 2 it had it. Yeah, I remember people being upset about that, because like, why the fuck would you put Gary Glitter on your soundtrack? Yeah, weird. Like, this is a man who... Oh, he, he, was, he wasn't going to receive royalties. Ah. So that, that's good. Like, this is a man who, like, apparently was a big deal in rock and roll and, like, a glam rock singer and stuff, and, like, by the time you and I grew up, he was nothing. Yeah. No, like, I completely about forgot him. about him until you had mentioned. Right. I but yeah, back to Green Day though. I yes. would very much like to see them become a queer core band. That would be fucking rad. Because I, I I was reading up into the band a little bit on their uh, their uh, fucking what you call it their biographies and shit on Wikipedia, and apparently like Mike Dern's a staunch v- vegetarian. Yeah. And I uh, don't know about Trey, but I just remember he smokes lettuce. Like, uh, I know AFI has only idolized them, and, like, uh, David Havoc's, like, a big fucking vegan, like, straight edge kind of thing. Yeah. And Green Day's not straight edge at all. No. Like, Billy Joe has had some substance abuse problems in the past. I mean, that's what Geek Strength Stink Breath is about, is about having the breath from doing math. Yeah. So it's like, you know, if Green Day becomes a queer core band, <laughs> like if I also try to become a queer core band. <laughs> oh, that would be interesting. Like, I don't know if anyone AFI is actually queer. I, I don't. No one said anything. I don't think. Yeah, but. What if we got. What if it wasn't like the whole band became like a queer core thing, but we had like Billy Joe do like a side project with some other queer musicians? You could be part of the Laura Jane Grace Tom Morello thing we talked about. Yeah, with Tom Morello. Yeah. The folk punk uh, with Billy Joe Armstrong, Tom Morello, and Laura Jane Grace. Even though Tom Morello is straight, but he's a total comrade. Oh, yeah. You're fucking a uh, political side major from, like, Harvard or whatever. From Harvard. Yeah. And he shut down a fan. He's like, oh, I hate it when artists get political that don't have any, like, political background. And he's like, I'm a fucking poli- political science major from Harvard, dickhead. Yeah. Well, you remember it was like a fucking big deal when Paul Ryan admitted to liking Rage Against the Machine and they were like, yeah, don't fucking listen to us. You're the fucking machine that we rage against, dude. Yeah. And like, that's not... I posted in uh, Discord 
during like the re- the counting process or recount process or whatever it was. Yeah. Where the woman was dancing to um what was it? Um one of their famous songs I'm forgetting the name of. The fuck you don't do it you tell me. <sighs> Zach de la Rocha? No, the uh the, the actual song. Oh, killing in the, or in the name of? Yeah, in the name of killing, uh, killing, killing, killing in the name. name. Yeah. Killing in the name of um yeah, there was a woman dancing in a Trump hat with a fucking Blue Lives Matter flag tied around her neck <laughs> like a cape. It's like, oh Jesus Christ, you did not listen to the song's lyrics at all, because it is all about like anti white supremacist police brutality, that sort of thing. Like the only more direct song about it is maybe fuck the police. Yeah. You know, there are people who who have there's like a thing where you when you listen to the song you cannot hear the lyrics. Yeah. Like like it's a legitimate thing where it's like people do not process what the, what's actually being said in the song and they just vibe with it, you know? Yeah. Maybe that's what's going on. Who knows? Maybe, but just or just some insane stupidity. Yeah. I mean, it's worth noting that Billy Joe's other solo album is the duet with Nora Jones, which yeah, I think is has like it's it's kind of queer coded. I feel like in a way, like of course that's what yeah. he would do. Oh, do you know who Nora Jones's father is? Uh, I do not. Ravi Shankar. Oh, oh yeah, that does. I had to write a paper on him, and that does ring a bell now. So that's that's also very interesting. Uh. That's, yeah, because I had to uh, write a paper in uh, Music Appreciation about uh, Ravi Shankar. God, if I hear that fucking sitar part one more fucking time, I'm going to blow my... Which, which sitar part? One of, like, his famous sitar songs. Like, just it's just all sitar for <laughs> 30 minutes. <laughs> <sighs> it's like, Jesus fucking Christ, I can't. Like, I like some sitar, but, like, 30 straight minutes of nothing but sitar. Fuck. We we gotta do Foreverly at some point. I'm very like it. It is the folk album. It, that is the beginning, you know. Yeah. Uh, and they're all doing like Everly Brothers songs. Oh, that's so cool. That was... But <laughs> this conversation has made me very excited about Green Day. After all this time, I did not expect this. Me either. There's a thing too. Fucking re- redemption arc for Green Day. This last year. 2019, they released their Woodstock album. You know the story. I did not listen to that. It's, it was like a record store day thing. Did you, did you know the story about their appearance at Woodstock '94? They had a mud fight. Yeah, it ended in a riot and a mud fight. Yeah, and I, and uh, fucking Billy Joe's uh, Blue Strat got uh, the electronics got fucked. They had to put a new pickup in. Mike Dirt got like demolished in the face by a security guard. Yeah, he lost like five teeth. Yeah. That, like the audio is on the album. Like that's like another thing I kinda wanna listen to. Like if if you're thinking about it, like if they're trying to move on in a way, like this is the way to do it, you know? Like Yeah. Fucking put plug and put the Woodstock album out there. Like look at look at this. Look at the cover art. That's dookie, but with some shit slapped over it, just like Father of All. Is American it Idiot is. with ship slapped yeah. over it, mud and duct tape. So I, I think I think you're right. Never trust a hippie. I think you're right, and that whatever they do next will be very different and very interesting. Yeah, I accidentally stumbled onto a Green Day conspiracy, pulling stuff out of my ass. <laughs> and like this is either the time, like this is when cigarettes and Valentine's is gonna happen, or it's not. Yeah. It's now or never. Yeah. Or or will or will it be like they put out like the new album of like queer core and then like like oh for the old fans who are like disappointed or whatever here's cigarettes and valentines. That would be cool as well. Because it really seems like they're kind of like going through the archives a little bit here. Yeah. Oh, I'm curious. Definitely, I'm. I, I'm gonna watch Green Day closely come 2021. <laughs> like this, is like they see, see, they did it smart because they they started last year. You know, they they got into fucking Beat Saber and they were playing the the video game awards on you know, like being like, oh, f- why is Green Day at the fucking game awards? Like, why? What? What? What are these? Yeah. What are these songs? Why do they sound so generic? 
Why, why isn't Mike Dern playing his fucking P-Bass? He's playing on Rickenbacker. That's not right. And then the album comes out. I'm like, what the fuck? This is just Green Day going down that downward trend again. Like, why why, why are they coming back out? And like, why are they making such a big deal about it, right? Yeah. And then, and then they drop the shoe on the network. Not only do they drop... Oh, Money, Money, 2020 Part 2 is coming out, right? Yeah. They drop Trans Am out of fucking nowhere. Yeah. And it's just fucking, fucking wild. And they, 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 they tease the single, like, you know, Amaka is a Nazi, and you're like, oh, that's going to be a Money, Money, 2020 Part 2. No, it's not. It is on an EP released before that. And it might be on Money, Money, 2020 Part 2. We'll see. But I, What if Trans Am is just a prelude? Whether it's, like, all the political stuff or just, like, the beginning of the political stuff. That might be. I, I, have, a, I have a feeling that uh, Money, Money, 2020 Part 2 is going to be all about 2020. Oh, man. If, they, if it's, like, a, a look back, that's terrifying to think about. How, how 2020 has been one hell of a fucking year. We almost started a fucking world war. At yeah. The beginning. Then, uh... Coronavirus started really kicking up, and we've just been stuck in our homes for fucking months. And all this other shit just kind of happened here and there that we kind of forget about, or like yeah, like the kid, like the planned kidnapping of a uh, house member and of governor, of a governor, of a governor, governor. Yeah, Gretchen Whitmer. Yeah, and, or uh, like how you know, fucking Kobe Bryant died. Yeah, and like all that shit, and then there was the. Kyle Rittenhouse thing. Fucking murder hornets? Yeah, and then come fucking end of May, beginning of June. Just, like, the biggest march against, like, police brutality in the current, current, uh, generation. Yeah, the current century. Generation. Yeah. Whew. Uh, there, There was a meme I saw that was like, uh, Oh, I wonder what it's. I wonder why how people couldn't tell what the being in the fall room was like. It's like how could you not tell that your society was falling? Come twenty twenty, fuck. <laughs> it's like, I mean, oh man. You know, if if there's any way to avoid society absolutely collapsing, we'll probably find it. Oh, it's yeah, possible. Yeah, I don't know. I I really like this conspiracy we have got. Yeah. I hope some shred of it is true. I hope there is a yeah. reason why Father of All Motherfuckers is the way it is. I'm pretty sure that was just them pulling a prank. Like how he would perform with like Slave written across his cheek. If it's just a prank album, that is fantastic. That is like the biggest prank pulled in a while. What if it's just Cigarettes and Valentines? Like that's it. You're just like, oh yeah, by the way, also. <laughs> I mean, it's probably not going to be that for sure, but like, because they they also got that tour they're going to do with Fall Out Boy and Weezer. Remember oh, that? Yeah. yeah. I wonder what that was about. Yeah. That's just part of the joke. Is this like a fucking like Joaquin Phoenix thing? Like oh, you knows? play it all fucking serious until you until you get what you want out of it. Yeah. Anyway. Who knows? Yeah, I. What? Holy shit, I'm excited for Green Day in 2021. <laughs> Never thought I would even agree with you on that, but here we are. It's it's another turn to 2020. That's just how it is. That's how the year just makes you fucking doubt yourself and just, like, puts everyone on their ass. RK, RKO's you out of fucking nowhere. Was that? RKO's you out of fucking nowhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we should also talk about Foxborough Hot Tubs a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just kind of been talking about the network. There's also a fun little throwback rock and roll ro- record. I really like it. I like it. I like yeah. it more than the Green Day albums I've, heard, I've listened to. Same here. Mother Mary's a fucking bop. Oh yeah. Not Drop and Roll is also cool. Uh, Broadway, another cool song. That's also one of the ones that are supposed to be on a. Uh, Cigarettes and Valentines. Yeah, as was um, pedestrian. 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 
Also, did you did you listen to the Highway One track that was cut from the I album? Did not. I did I that was the one track I didn't get to. It was cool. I also enjoyed it. I I think it's funny that it's the second time they've had an album cut because uh, it talks about drunk driving. Or, like, yeah. having fun behind the wheel while being intoxicated. Yeah. Uh, when, I, when I think of, like, drunk driving song, the first one that comes to mind is fucking Kiss is Detroit Rock City, even though as much as I shit on uh, Kiss. Yeah. Because, uh, uh, going back to Shenanigans for a second, the song was going to be called D.Y. And that was supposed to be on there. Ah. Uh, and it was cut so late that it was already on, like, the promotional stuff booklet. yeah but it was like for the booklet they managed to like you know like kind of scribble it out you know yeah but it was still there and again, like i think i talked about this before but like another reason why you know cigarettes valentine's couldn't be the version that we saw is because shenanigans exists and that is b-sides and rarity's album and like you're yeah. not gonna put two of those out in a roll you know no you're not but anyway yes uh foxborough hot tubs Yeah, it's a fun throwback rock and roll record. At some points, I forgot. Oh yeah, I'm, this, this is like Green Day, isn't it? Fuck, I forgot. Like, it really makes me question. Like, what is going on at Reprise that makes them want to do it this way? Yeah. Like they got, they seem to have gotten like a, a blank check with American Idiot a little bit, but they still had to be punk, I guess. But like, they made the network as like a side project. And then they made yeah. this as a side project for 21st Century Breakdown, where it's like, you know, we're doing so much fucking punk, man. Let's you know, let's just fuck it. Let's just do the other shit we want to do. Yeah. Like, what are these fucking streams gonna converge? Yeah. Because like, because the, there's like the Green Day and the image that they have, and then there's like what they actually want to do, and they're you know they have the position to actually like do some of that stuff they actually want to do, but like they're not, they just shy away from like making it all like a single whole. I think that'd be for the benefit at a certain point. Yeah. What if, what if they did like a super collaboration album with themselves? I was thinking about that. I was yeah, thinking about that. IQ move where they pretend that they're not the other two bands, but they are at the same time. And they're just fucking collaborating with themselves. Yeah, that'd be so cool. Like it's Father of All Motherfuckers Part Two. It's in three parts. The uh, Fox Row Hot Tubs part, it's the Network Park, and it's the Green Day part. Yeah. Oh, that'd be so cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And then, like, they do, they, like, get, like, a pinhead gunpowder involved somehow. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be interesting as hell. They get, like, Screeching Weasel involved somehow or something, or, uh. Oh, yeah. They shit on Blink-182 for old time's sake. Look at the cover-ups in it, too, because the cover-ups is just a side project. Uh, get uh, Davey Havoc involved. Oh my god, yeah! Mr. You know, fucking, uh, uh, Billy Joe's retiring from being St. Jimmy, so I'll do it now. <laughs> uh. Oh man. It's funny, too, they have the cover-ups, a cover band, and then Billy Joe releases a cover album. It's not with them. Yeah. They're surprisingly, uh, this was a really good idea. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad we let it balloon to like, because at first this was just going to be about the network and the, and the Foxborough hot tubs. Like just, just a strict yeah. comparison of, uh, you know, stop, drop and roll the Foxborough hot tubs album, which we've had not said the name of it at all. This whole, this whole hour. No, we have, we have not said stop, drop and roll at all. <laughs> <laughs> it was supposed to, yeah. I, I think you can tell which one we prefer. <laughs> I really like the Fox Hot Tubs. I really want. I, I actually really want to own it. I want to own both of those albums and fucking Trans Yeah, I'd love. To, I'd love to find Money Money Twenty Twenty on vinyl. Like I'm gonna buy all these fucking albums digitally for sure, at least. Like this is this has been one of the most one of the biggest surprises I think we've had all year. Yeah. Like uh, like there's there's this and then there's fucking Weekend Run Club. Like it, it's like yeah. one and two. Oh man. And, like, it's not even over yet. We, we have one more album to, like, think about here. Yeah. And I don't know, like, you said you wanted to come back and, like, get, like, give our first impressions, and we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll... give, like, do, like, a, a two-day listen thing, like, again, like, what we did with uh, just Trans Am. Yeah. And I think we'll probably do that for our ranking episode, right? 
Yeah. Well, like, kind of just bolt it onto that, because that's where we are right oh, now. I, I was thinking having its own standalone thing. And Maybe we could do that, too. We could do that, too. We're doing our, our ranking episode. What I am up for whatever, because, like, there's so much to cover all of a sudden. Like, we just started covering Green yeah. Day for fun, because we thought, you know... I don't even know what we thought. We're just, like, we're just gonna start doing it. There's probably not gonna be that much more coming out. Well, we were like, oh, let's shit on Father of All Motherfuckers. Yeah, because Colin, our... yeah, Colin didn't want to do it. Yeah. So like, and, oh, uh, yeah. we had we had a week where it's like, okay, it's just us. What are we doing? Yeah. And we're like, oh, let's get Father of All Motherfuckers out of the way and just shit on it. And then it's like, well, let's also do American Idiot so we can have something good yeah. to talk about. Yeah, and because it's the album art. Yeah. And, and, then... and then that just turned into the fucking Green Day series. <laughs> <laughs> like we went away for a like, while and we came back and it's like, and it's like some of our, our most fun episodes to record are just us chatting about Green Day like I like I really hated last episode though was the thing I did not yeah. enjoy doing fucking Dookie and Insomniac I did not no those albums did not age well but holy shit they Wait. were onto something with the network and Foxborough Hot Tubs yes that is that is the Green Day you have to follow now is like don't follow Green Day. Follow the other stuff they're doing. Yeah. Like, like I'm just imagining all the Green Day side projects that could have been. You know, like imagine if they did like an emo punk band, like when oh, that was popular. God. Like to to cut like to, to like to to fight against My Chemical Romance and all that. Imagine yeah. what they could have done with that. Oh my God! Yeah. Like Billy Joe, like going like the whole like Gerard way with it. Oh my God! I think I think he could have done it too. Yeah, he, they easily could have transitioned into an emo punk. Because like, think about Foxborough Hot Tubs and the network. I think that they, like, especially Foxborough Hot Tubs, that, that uh, it shows off that Billy Joe Armstrong is actually a really good singer and a really good band leader. Yeah. yeah. He does all those songs effortlessly, really well. Like, they're all, like, throwback rock and roll, you know? Yeah. They, they, like, just... Robert Plant kind of style stuff. Yeah, and he tackles them all. Like, without a like, there's not a, like it, it, it's there's not a flaw to it. Like, no. Like Mother Mary, especially, is seriously good. Yeah. And it's like compare that to the stuff and like uh, again, Father of All. It's like, dude, like you you're actually actually a good front man. Yeah. I don't. Know, I am just. I, I don't even know what you like. Do you want to talk about what we would do for our next Green Day episode here? Well, we're gonna do um, our next uh, for our next Green Day episode. Like I know um, we'll, we'll mention what we're gonna do. Like we already had talked about, we're gonna do like a rankings episode for like the whole year after this because we're coming up on the end somehow. Hello. Oh shit. I'm I'm back. Okay, good. I thought it was me for a second. No, you cut out. But uh, I I know we we're gonna cover Uno dos Trace, uh, in one episode. I know, I kind of want to wait on that though. Yeah, I, I don't want to do that one, just that yet. one is gonna be a slog. I know that. Yeah, I don't want to do. I don't want to ruin our fun again. No, we need we need to have another good good Green Day episodes before we have a slog fest again. Like I'm looking over uh, looking over their stuff here. Sh- should we do that movie? Which one? The one, the the one that you sent, where it's just Billy Joe. Ordinary World. Yeah. Oh, well, hold on a second. Let me, let me, let me, uh, let me, let me look up something real. Quick. The one where he smashes. It doesn't even look like Billy Joe that much, surprisingly. Yeah. Yeah, Ordinary World. Yeah. It's it's the glasses. Wait, well, what if we did that? We did the uh, the Angus, because. That had like a very famous like oh there's it's a it's an exclusive Green Day song because it was from Dookie. Ah. Here, yeah. On. Why not? I have never heard of this movie. Yeah, I'll I'll throw it in the chat. I'm on I'm on the Wikipedia page. Okay. Oh wait, it's a Chris Crutcher story. Well, all right. Chris Crutcher's a very good YA writer. All right. Uh, he has a book called uh, Deadline about a um, high schooler who turns 18 and finds out he's going to die of cancer. Oh, shit. And he's like, I'm not going to tell anybody. And he's like, 
Doctor, you can't tell anybody either because I'm 18 now, so it's all my choice. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Then they were, yeah, if we do this movie in Ordinary World, it'd be very interesting to see how how they uh yeah line up against each other. Very different, but both uh, important in Day's career, I think. Yeah, Jar, composed by, written by Mike Dern about his friend who died in a car accident when he was nine. Yeah. I'm um, looking at Pope song. Ooh, hell yeah. Here's a here's a on the wiki. Here's a little thing about the alternate cut of Angus. Early in production, the film contained scenes where Angus's father was gay, reflecting the original story. Producer Don Steele at first approved the idea, but upon seeing a screen test or the t- test screening, she asked the director to cut it. And it is said early in the film that he died when Angus was born. Interesting. Yeah. Is uh, my my memory serves. I have not read it, but Athletic Shorts, the story that Ang- the the book that Angus is from, was very uh progressive for the time for, for featuring gay characters and being a YA novel about like yeah. school athletics. But yeah, <laughs> whenever whenever we decide to do, yeah, the last story was about uh. And dying of AIDS. Which, yeah. He seems to like to do stories about people who die and like people who have like a death sentence. I wanna know. I mean, that's just young adult. Which tangent. Young adult novels suck now. I I when when you find a good YA novels, you find them. Like they are there. Like you really yeah, have to like fucking. More, more often than not, they find you. Like, a good book... I always say, like, a good book finds you. Yes. You don't go seeking it out. Like, um, first time I read Ready Player One, I actually think it's a, a decent book. It's, like, not the best, but I read it a I... like weekend after just stumbling upon it in the library. Like, you probably found it with that before the movie, right? Way before the movie. Because that's how you found The Martian, too. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm kind of a hipster with some books. Yeah. <laughs> I did not like Ready Player One. I just... I thought it was... It was it was too dumbed down for me. Yeah, I can understand that. I I, I like the I, I'm a huge fan of world building and proper world building done right. And I love the Oasis as a concept. I do, but like the amount of of stories that could like be set. In yes, the first hundred books, first hundred pages of that book is just explaining to the reader like they are dumb, like like that they have no fucking idea what a fucking MMO is, and like maybe that's what he wanted to do, Ernest Klein, to like. Okay, can get mass audience appeal, but it's like, no, I don't, I don't want to read what an MMO is when I know what it is. Excuse me. But yeah, I get that. It's like the thing I hate most is like, people tell me information I already know, and it's not done for like a certain effect you're trying to like make in the story. Like if you're repeating information, information for a reason, I can totally get behind that. But if the reason is yeah, just... I, 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 I can understand like the needing to go more into de- detail about, like, the type of tech that was used. Like, how they all use, like, haptic gloves and goggles. Because this was in the early days of VR, when VR wasn't really a... Yeah, that that I understand. That is fine. But, like, Just... explaining an MMO, you don't really need to. Yeah. But, um... I remember when I was in college, I, I was taking these classes on writing young adult novels, because I do want to be a writer at some point in my life. And there was this really great book I read called Give You the Sun, which is a, which is a, f- a fantastic gay novel. It's so good. It is so lyrical and so passionate. And I had to read it in like a weekend, and I loved it. It was like one of those things that was like, I'm glad I took this class. I'm glad I was forced to read this in like three or four days. Oh, man. Like, some of that book maybe doesn't hold up as much as I'd like it to. But the experience of reading it, it's great. Yeah, I'll leave them like in the chat because like I I I'm gonna just keep recommending books to you until you start reading them. <laughs> I need I do need to read more. <laughs> Maybe we'll set up like a book club thing. We gotta do fucking House of Leaves. I just reread that. I'm gonna reread. I'll give you the sun because yeah, some some of those passages really fucking blew me over when I first. Read. Uh, I'll start recommending you some like hard sci-fi books when I read some more of them. <laughs> Because <laughs> mo- most of most of my book collection is just sci-fi and fantasy. Because I'm a nerd. Yeah, I just kind of read whatever. Like I got like, I got some hardcore political history shit on my shelf. I got some like gay ass novels. 
Uh, I read a. I took I took the first edition Harry Potter's I had off my shelf. Yeah, read those when I was a kid. Yeah, I reread uh, like a couple years ago. I reread Philosopher's Stone. Honestly, I loved it. It's a good book. It's had wet, good world building, great characters. Yeah, it's just one of those things where it's like the author and her views are so hardly ingrained. Yeah, like the fucking um. Fucking Gringotts, um, elves? No, they're not elves. Goblins. Goblins, goblins. How they're just hook-nosed creatures that are slightly inferior, and they control the world's wealth. Yeah. And, like, for me, I got off the train, like, like, I was already, like, kind of done once Deadly Hollows the movies, came out, and it's like, okay, this was a saga, this was, like, a time in our lives that we had... You know, the books took a span of 10 years. The movies took a span of 10 years. So that's about a good 13-year span. Give or take yeah. 14, maybe. Like, that was all we needed. That was good. That was fine. And then they tried to make it a modern franchise. Where it's like, no, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep giving you more. And everything... Pottermore and fucking Fantastic Beasts. Like, the point where I got off the train, like, for, for sure, was Cursed Child. I was off the train before Cursed Child. Like, when I read Cursed Child, I was so fucking disappointed in everything about it's it. It's just fan fiction. And it is very bad and very specific fan fiction. It's like, it's like how uh, Fifty Shades of Grey was fucking fan fiction. And, like, the thing about fucking Cursed Child is that they, they, they really tease that Harry's son and Draco's son are supposed to be together. And they just, they just, they pull the rug right out from under you at the very last scene. Or, like, the one says to the other, like, oh, hey, how's your sister doing? Like, fuck off. Like, the whole fucking crux of Cursed Child, like, the, the central character dynamic is how fucking Harry's son and Draco's son are in, like, a fucking Romeo and Juliet situation where the families hate each other. And they want to keep them from each other. Which wasn't really even the case at the end of the, bo- of the books. No. But well, they had like this. I remember this very clearly. This scene, I think it might have been like the alternate reality set in the play because they go to different uh, timelines and whatnot. Because of course they do. Where there's like there's like a scene of like they're like going down like the 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 staircases that shift right, and they keep uh, they keep going down staircases and like missing each other and like they just keep being separated from each other. Like it is a very very clear star crossed lover situation. He's setting the table so you know he's serious. But then it's like you get shit like, oh, they're they're trying to escape from the train, and who the fuck do they find on the on the roof of the train trying to stop them? The fucking trolley lady with the fucking trolley. Like, oh yeah, she was she's like actually some kind of security system built into the train by magic and the trolley and then all the thing. That's just part of the disguise. Like fuck off. I, I'm gonna since this got into Harry Potter territory, I'm going to recommend a podcast real quick. <laughs> uh, I recommend you listen to. Okay. At least just one episode, at least one uh, like thing they do on it, like season, I guess. Uh, it's called Potterotica, and it was called Potterotica, and now it's called Fangasm. Uh-huh. Where they just kind of read fa- uh, fan fiction uh, from various media. Okay. But uh, the one that I'm uh, thinking of in particular is, which one was it? It was fucking, I think it was season five. But it was um, one of the ones, um, or season four. No, it's um, season three. It's one of the seasons, but it's about, uh, yeah, it's season three because uh, it's not showing up on my feed. And I, li- I listened to that. But um, it was a, uh, a, a story about Harry and Draco. Okay. And it did a really good job of like trying to keep like this tense, like they kind of hate each other, but they kind of love each other narrative at the same time. All right. And it ends the way that all slash fiction ends, you know? Yeah. But it's just, it's got a really good build up to it. You just about like photography. Oh boy. You just reminded me of like how great Harry Potter fan fiction was in the 2000s. Yeah, like there was, uh, what was it? The so, so, there's like a huge Harry Potter fanfic that was like the size of a book that was like Masters of Science or something. Well, then you can talk about stuff like, like you know, get to like the, the fun bad stuff like My Immortal. Oh, yeah. Like the internet lost their shit about My Immortal. 
Like yeah, that was all good stuff. Like that was just as an important part of fucking Harry Potter like fandom and like growing up with that franchise before it was taken away from us, you know? Yeah. And then you, you fucking gotta have the the bad to have the good, and the bad makes you appreciate the good that much more. And then you have like fucking Potter Puppet Pals. Yeah. Like, oh my god, I, I fucking love the Harry Potter Puppet Pals because come once um fucking J.K. Rowling tweeted her shit out about the. Uh, the fucking trans women thing. Yeah. Uh, the Potter. I, I I screenshotted it, but the the Twitter account was like, <clears throat> said some great shit about it. Let's see if I can find that. I mean, Stephen King was also there saying some great shit. Oh yeah, um, I remember uh, the, uh she deleted a tweet that she tweeted about saying that she loves Stephen King. Because he specifically responded by saying trans women are women. <laughs> yes. Like, what a fucking power move. <laughs> yeah. yeah the, the man wrote Cujo on a Coke binge, remembers none of it. A, has written some questionable things about chat with children, but still thinks that trans women are women. Yeah. And fucking J.K. Rowling, just, her career just fucking tanked. She was a wonder kid. Yeah. She was, like, she is, she is, like, one of the most important writers of modern times. Yes. And here we fucking are. Her and, fucking Robert Galbraith had a fucking trans woman rapist. And Robert Galbraith being named after like the fucking proponent of fucking like gay conversion therapy. Or yeah, gay conversion therapy. Yeah. yeah. Fuck off. I like, think I remember reading like the casual vacancy. I remember being excited when that came out. Like her big first not Harry Potter book. And that looking back, even that was like a fucking like Oh, like this guy, his his big thing is that he's fat, and he has health problems because he's fat. And this girl, she she's she, she's from the lower part of society, and look what happens to her because of where her place is in society. It's like fuck off now. Ugh. We've tangentized a long way from Green Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we kind of just dove into like the early two thousands culture as a whole, which I feel kind of suits the episode. Oh yeah, like I talked about before, like American Idiot was like the first thing I was aware of outside of like Harry Potter and like stuff like that as far as like pop culture was. Yeah. Like that album was very important in my life whether or not like it's really great to look at now. I heard it when I was like six or seven. Like I remember in fourth grade this kid that I knew like had the shirt and he was wearing the shirt all the time. It was, like, the first band that I was, like, really aware of that was, like, a modern band. I have a fucking guitar tap book behind me. Like, I'm holding it in my hands right now. The Green Day Bolt in the Bible guitar tap book. (laughs) And in 2020, we live in this time where Father Father of All Motherfuckers might be a prank. And Green Day might actually come back from it. But J.K. Rowling is not pulling a prank. She is fucking genuine as shit. Yeah. And her career is just fucking tanking. Yeah. And there, you can't pull a prank base. Like, you can't come back from that. No, you can't. Like, if fucking, where fucking Green Day is, like, possibly positioning themselves to fucking come back and, like, do something new and fun and interesting and be relevant again. Yeah. And J.K. Rowling to, like, do the opposite, basically, is fucking insane. And I don't see, and I, I don't use that term lately. That's just the way 2020 is. sentence been. I never thought I'd fucking say. Green Day is more progressive than J.K. Rowling. Yes! Absolutely! Uh, somehow! Some way! I mean. Oh my god. Billy Joe being bi helps that and all, but uh. Oh, definitely. Like. There are some idiot conservative gays. I know. Like, imagine, like. I try, <laughs> like so many times this fucking podcast this episode I've been so like breathless talking about this shit because it's amazing like imagine if Green Day actually finally grew up whatever they do next it's like you know Dookie is fucking like you know when they're children basically and whatever comes next is like when they're actually fucking adults that are mature as fuck yeah like I don't know like that just that just was weird to me because Dookie came out the year I was born, so I was a child then. And now yeah. I'm, I'm a fucking oh, mid twenties grown ass man, and here we are, 
Green Day is still keeping up with the time somehow. <laughs> yeah. Possibly. We don't know for sure. We don't know. We could be sure. very off and they're just, you know, they could just crash. I don't know. But the network is really pulling us in that direction. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. You know, we needed that we needed the Owl's Class episode to give us a breather. We did. I'm glad we did that first. I am too. I am very glad we did that first. Especially after the whole Janelle Monet thing. That was three albums in itself. Yeah. And we and this one for being I mean, this, you know, this one got away from us. Yeah, this one was ballooned for being a simple comparison of Foxborough Hot Tubs and the network to then embracing the, the fact that the network was coming back at the same time we were gonna cover them, to then, you know, yeah. pulling in the cigarettes and Valentine's conspiracy, because of course we would. And then last minute I'm like, oh fuck. Trans Am came out. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, like we were prepared to talk about the Money Money twenty twenty four too. And then Trans Am just oh. is there. Like here we are. Like we timed it unexpectedly perfectly. Oh my god, yeah. Oh my god. It's been an oh. exhilarating time in a way. Yeah, I am fucking I am I've been drinking wine all throughout this podcast, <laughs> and now I'm just fucking feeling. I am just, I am just I, I like, drank like, I drank like three quarters of the bottle. I'm fucking just giddy as fuck right now, just talking about this. I love this. Oh, me too. And the wine is helping a lot. And, I, and I'm not even drinking anything. Is the thing. Oh. <laughs> oh, I I wanted to mention too. Weirdly enough, in this whole like mini sewed series we've been doing without Ritalin. Uh, Fox for our hot tubs. They have a song about it's called Sally, and they talk about Sally Ride, and I, and I think it's maybe just like a fun little callback to her or something like that, right? And it's the second song about Sally Ride we've had. Yeah. It was you know, they did a song, and then Janelle Monae did a song about Sally Ride. It, it's just a sign of being progressive, you know, just paying your dues yeah. to Sally Ride, I guess. Uh other songs I liked on a uh, fucking stop, drop, and roll. Dark Side of Night is a really cool closer, a very atmospheric, like, very 60s, like, cinema, like, uh, spies and shit. I really appreciated the, like, yeah. how... This is the flute solo. The flute solo on that song is oh, yeah. so fucking, fucking wild. Yeah, there was the saxophone on Piece of Truth. Yeah. Like, that is stuff you don't hear. That is stuff you don't hear from Green Day. That is stuff you would never expect. But yeah, the food cell on Dark Side of Night was... Yeah, that, that, is, inc- that is an incredible find. And Pieces of Truth, like, having a great ending as well. Like, a hard rock, and like, this is where Billy Joel comes out with his fucking metal screams. But she does not do nearly enough, because he's good at them. Yeah, what if we got a Green Day metal side project? What if the next Green Day album was just metal? Uh, like punk metal like just some Iron Maiden style shit sure I was thinking more like Rage Against the Machine a little bit but yeah oh uh, well uh, if I say punk I say Iron Maiden because Iron Maiden is like more traditional punk metal but like yeah I can see where you're going like Rage Against the Machine sort of style of like just heavy rock. like not yeah. not rap rock I don't think Billy Joe could rap maybe but oh no I don't, I don't think I'd want to hear him rap unless he happens to be very good that's 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 kind of unlikely. He would have done it by now if he was good. Oh, definitely. Unless there's just like a song that we have just not heard because I have not heard all of Green Day's discography. I am just kind of waiting to do to listen to more as the more we do this this series at this point. Yeah, whoever th- who, who would have thought that we would have been excited by Green? <laughs> and like. I did not come into this episode being excited for them. It was only when I started listening to all this stuff. Like, oh, yeah. actually. Because I, I did make mention of, I thought that um, my, ne- the network was like their best album that I had listened to. And I had a coworker tell me the same thing recently, too. Yeah. And I was like, surely not. Surely not. And sure enough. Ugh. Oh, man. I'm just like penciling in the whole Angus and Ordinary World thing right now into, into our... Alright. I don't know when we're going to do that. It might be months from now. It might be you know, a few weeks. I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. But, oh boy. Uh, 
Anything else you want to say about any of the things we listen to? Uh, other than to just go listen to them, listeners, if you haven't. Yeah, listen to the network. Listen to Foxborough Hot Tubs. Like, listen it's to like, Trans Am. Yeah, listen to Trans Am specifically, because that just came out. Yeah. And the thing, too, is the fun, the fun thing about Trans Am is that it has a fuller sound than Money Money 2020. Like, you yeah. can definitely tell the production quality has been amped up. Oh, definitely. I think it has higher production quality than Father of All Motherfuckers. Probably. Which is wild. Again. Yeah. A four track EP is better than a whole ass album from yeah. the same group, same year. Two completely different things. Oh boy. If, if Green Day is able to pull this off, stage this third level comeback. This will be like the fucking biggest Uno reverse card ever. <laughs> like, I would appreciate Father of All Motherfuckers then. I really would. Oh my god, yeah. We have to see if that's really true or not. We really have to wait for we, it. We, ha- we, ha- we have to say, we can't just get excited for no reason. We have to see if they pull through. I mean... <laughs> just, again, the, the, the track listing for Father of All Motherfuckers. I was a teenage teenager. <laughs> I forgot about that. I was a teenage teenager is the, is the name of a real song. Drugs. <laughs> Stab you in the heart. Oh. Junkies on a high. Oh my god. Fire ready aim. Because not ready aim fire. Fire ready aim. Like, looking at it more, this has to be some kind of prank. Oh my god, it does. It, you know what? It reminds me a lot of that was not a prank. What? Fucking so Kiss's Sonic Boom. I've made reference to this album in the chat before, I know. I don't think I've ever brought it up on an episode. But you brought up a lot of Kiss, but maybe not this. I This is easily their worst episode. Their worst album ever. They have a, a song called Danger Us. Oh, you've definitely talked about this before. It's Danger Me! Dangerous! Uh, And I'm singing it with more soul than they obviously uh, fucking Paul Stanley did. We need to to bring in St. Anger now. I feel like. Uh, That is is the third part of this trifecta. Where it's like... Like, I had the trifecta of uh, December Underground, Black Parade, and American Idiot. New trifecta. Father of all motherfuckers. St. Anger. And uh, was it Sonic Boom? Yeah, Kiss's Sonic Boom. It's yes. not even streaming. You have to watch it on YouTube. I mean, surely there's a, a copy, like a CD out there. Oh, yeah. I bought, a, I bought it for my father. But you cannot get the album on like on Spotify or anything like that. came out in 2009. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, God. Positive reviews from critics. Jesus Christ. Uh, and it is not a good album. The album finished in 2010 as one of the Billboard's top 50 rock albums, according to Wikipedia. Like, once we finish recording, I'm going to have you listen to either Stand, Stand By My Side or fucking, um, or fucking Danger Us. Stand By My Side? It's not even out here. Uh, it's, it's, there's a, whoa, whoa, hold up. It's like, Stand By My Side, I'll be... Never Enough? Uh, yeah. stand, it's just called Stand. Ah, yes, there you go. <laughs> All right, so let's let's run down the list here. Favorite songs off of or best and worst off Trans Am. Start there. I uh, don't have a worst. Uh, best is Ivanka is a Nazi. Yes, agreed. Best and worst off of Money Money Twenty Twenty. Uh, worst is uh, X Ray Hamburger. Uh, best is um... I, I actually need to think about that one. You go, you go with your best and worst wife. Best is like Spike. And like Rochambeau and fucking Joe Robot. Worst, I don't know. Max Ray Hamburger. Like I'll go I'll, I'll go with Rochambeau for the best too. Any love of money or right hand Robin might be the worst. Yeah. And uh Fox Bar Hot Tubs, best to worst. Um did not spend enough time with that album to really pick. What was it? <clears throat> Didn't spend enough time with the album to really pick one. Okay. Mother Mary's great. Uh, uh yeah. If you find Highway 1 on YouTube, definitely suggest checking it out. It fits right I, in. I, I will. You all right there? Wine has been consumed. Yeah, wine has been totally consumed. That's all. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> uh, I am a bottle of wine deep right now, so... 
<laughs> uh, Broadway's also a cool song. Uh, worst off of that album, I don't know. H hard to say. Maybe she's a Saint yeah, Louis celebrity. Yeah, that hard to pick a, a worst off because it's just such a consistent vibe. It's Dark Side of Night again. Probably, probably one of the best tracks on the album because of that flute solo. Yeah. Okay, Jason Freese, I think his name is. Yeah, he he's just like a studio musician. Just fucking works with everybody. And uh, that's that's all three. Uh, and then, uh, I don't know, Cigarettes and Valentine's, our little playlist idea. Did you like anything off of that that we haven't listened to yet? Um, I, we, we, I, um, I'd like to mention, I think, that uh, Green Day's cover of uh, 19th Nervous Breakdown would have been a banger. I think it would have been really cool. I really want to hear what it would have been. Yeah, me too. Especially because apparently they, they actually are like all about doing covers. Like, why not just release that cover? Yeah. Like they, uh, Shoplifter, they, I wasn't a really a big fan of. Too Much Too Soon is, like, where it all comes together. Yeah, like Too Much the, Too Soon was a bop and a half. Like, that is, like, if that is the sound of the album, I would have really liked that album. Definitely. Uh, I mean, this is probably the only time we're going to cover Lights Out. And that was an okay song. It was fine. Yeah, it was alright. Like, I could see why it was a B-side. It wasn't, like, fantastic. It was kind of simple. But I think, I think, did I put it in my notes? <laughs> did I... Hope I did. Favorite song is kind of eh. Well, we'll, 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 go to, we'll cover favorite song when we cover the American Idiot musical. Yeah, I haven't heard it in that context yet. Oh, excuse me. Don't puke on air, please. Uh, no, I just, I just got the hiccups, don't worry. Uh, yeah, I, like, my favorite song I kind of like, it has the American Idiot style, so I, I, I appreciate that. It's just not, I can see why they cut it, because, you know, it's not like a, a song forwarding uh, song it it doesn't have anything like super important to the story. Yeah. But uh, lights out. Uh, I think that was one of the songs I said I definitely could see as being from cigarettes and Valentine's, but I think it got a facelift. Uh, kind of fun, not bad, but I can see why it's a B side. I like the sound of brutal love. Like, even though it wasn't really like the most Green Day, I can appreciate. I think uh, I heard twelve string on there. I think, and I really, I always appreciate an electric twelve string when I hear one. Yeah, Brutal Love was the point where, like, why don't they just release Cigarettes and Valentine's now? Like, what is stopping them? Yeah. I don't, it's, I like, one of, like, the biggest pieces of lost media term. Yeah, like, people would actually be really, like, into it. Yeah. Like, it's, it's the idea, like, okay, they'll put out their next American Idiot or whatever. Then they'll do Cigarettes and Valentine's whenever, once they have everyone's attention. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be cool. That'd be interesting. Definitely. Uh... Yeah, um, did you listen to Oh Love? Uh, Oh Love, uh, I did not. That's fine. It, it wasn't worth it. it we'll, we'll, we'll cover it when we get to Uno, but, uh... Yeah, when we get to the, uh, the Uno, Dos, Tres, and maybe Quattro. We'll, we'll do Quattro probably in a separate episode. Yeah. I think our goal now is just to cover everything Green Day. Yeah, fuck it, why not? <laughs> like, every, anything that we could, t we could tie in somehow... We'll, we'll do it. Yeah, we got the rant, the rant about series. About uh, series? Uh, yeah, well, because we, we, we called the first one, uh, or I called the first one, Domin, uh, Dom and Tri Dominic and Tricks rant about Green Day for 44 minutes. Right. I don't know what I called the second one. Or something. I think he just called it a mini set. But. I can look it up real quick. Uh, I'll pull up the YouTube Studio app right now. Uh. Tricks and Dominic. Rant, you, you called it D, DW uh, Mini Sode 13. Tricks and Dom rant about Green Day again for 41. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this will be, this will be, have a, have a very different name, I think. Yeah. Uncovering the Green Day conspiracy. <laughs> I don't know. Anything else you want to say? No, we've been at this for two hours. Let's land the ship. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's been Dissident Waves. This is probably our like one of our last recordings of the year. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll probably do one still for Money Money Twenty Twenty Part Two and our rankings episode, maybe something beyond that. I don't know. I do want to take a good yeah, we'll time. Good, I want to take a good chunk of time off though and like recharge a bit. Definitely. So we'll see what happens after this. Uh, I've been Dominic. Yeah. You can catch me online at D A C I C H O C K I on Twitter. Uh, I still write for Tilting Windows Studios. Um, and I do other stuff. You might 
for about some time. Uh, Callum is still around at Ritalin. You can catch him at uh, ritalinforkids.github.io. And he has a YouTube channel and all this stuff. He's not on Twitter, so whatever. Uh, you can follow Dissonant Waves on Twitter at Dissonant Waves. You can also like and subscribe to us on YouTube. We'd very much appreciate that. And visit our website, uh, dissonantwaves.space. It hasn't really been updated, I don't think, recently. It's one to visit no, anyway. I haven't had time to mess with that. I mean, I've been in the middle of them. Yeah, we will mess with that when we get the chance. Yeah, um, I have been Trix. You can catch me on Twitter, uh, tweeting wine drunk a lot now with uh, at a procrastinate underscore. Uh, it's like procrastinating astronaut and an underscore at the end of it. And uh, I also have a YouTube channel that's going on hiatus right now because uh, of the move. But I, I've got some. Oh, fuck, I found more. We need to, we need to cover for this Green Day uh, series. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that more as time goes on. Uh, I'll, I'm going to cut it off here, though. Yeah. Uh, almost two hours again. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. Have a great night. Bye-bye.